Yes, 23rd, eh? 23rd of the 10th, 2013. We're looking at, once again, those great writings of Paul, the Apostle, in uh, the writings of Corinthians. So we're going to go over to Corinthians, the first letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I should say chapter 2 and verse 1. This is the midweek teaching of Jesus the Christ Ministries mission. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus the Christ and him crucified. Uh, I gather that all mobile phones have been uh, rendered unworkable at this stage, eh? So, the title of our message today is Laughter or the Cross. A lot of ha, 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 he, 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 you know, in the world. And a lot of, you know, uh, happy, happy uh, postponing of dealing with uh, important issues in, in our lives, in the individual, in family life, church life, uh, sin life, all sorts of things. You know, we can make merry with it all. But in the writings of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, uh, verse 3, it says, Sorrow is better than laughter. By a sad countenance the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of myrrh, you know. And, uh, I mean, you can relate the, the house of myrrh, you know, to partying and barbecues all the time and reunions and uh, marijuana and ganja and ha, 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 happy, happy, drinking wine and beer and, and it's all just... A waste of time, really. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a barbecue or a bit of a get together, but I mean, when we become revelers, you know, when we become people who live for that sort of thing, we're in big trouble because the devil has got a perfect platform uh, where he can work from and hold you in uh, folly. So, the laughter or the cross, you know. And not so many years ago, there was a, 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 a ministry, Rodney Howard Brown and the likes of him you know, travelling through the world. And it was a lot about laughter and ha 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 and hysterical laughter and making noises uh, like animals and all sorts of things were going on. It was a real Hari Krishna thing, you know. Uh, I, I, I think the... Uh, Middle Eastern spirits were running rampant, but never really eventuated to anything uh, lasting, you know. We know one thing about Jesus and the Word and the Cross. We know that it, it's uh, when we allow the scalpel of the Lord, when we allow the scalpel of the Lord, the sword of the Spirit, to do a work, it's lasting. It's a once and for all thing. Can someone say amen? amen. Yeah, it's a once and for all thing that um, that when Christ does a work, hey, it's a true work. And there's no going back, you know. Oh, I slipped and I went back. No, you never slipped. You never repented. That's the problem. Yeah. So Paul, Paul was like you know, in the first verse of one Corinthians chapter two, it says, "I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellent speech 
and wisdom uh, of men declaring to you the testimony of God, but he came in the power of the Holy Spirit. So there are a lot of good orators out there, a lot of good speakers. You're listening today. There's a lot of good speakers out there. That you know, there's a lot of people who read a lot of books and, and wear themselves out and tire themselves by reading all sorts of books on knowledge and wisdom and blah blah blah. But God always cuts to the chase when you know God's on a case. You know, He cuts to the chase. And when the Holy Ghost uh, is installed and God calls a man to preach the express word of the Lord, it just sort of um, splinters. It, it, it shatters all other works of men, just totally destroys them. It's so beautiful that... Uh, God moving through an earthen vessel. Yeah, this is what Paul wanted. This is Paul's uh, vision, aim. You know, this was his ambition. This was his everything. As he said, for I, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus the Christ and him crucified. He knew that's where everything is. He knew that's where every single thing is. It, you know, the best medicine available uh, for all times, uh, for all losses, aches, pains, although some say laughter, you know, and even scripture does say um, that uh, laughter, um, a merry heart maketh good like a medicine. But a merry heart can't save. Can't save. A, a, a merry heart can't set free, but it is medicinal. It can be medicinal. And one thing we do know about medicine, there's always a repeat, isn't there? On the, on the prescription. <laughs> but Paul the Apostle offers us a, a prescription, uh, uh, the paraclete prescription that does the job once. That's it. You, there's no comeback. It's not like the, the common flu, you know. You have to keep you trying everything on the shelf. We know that to get a touch from the Lord is so real. And there was the woman who had the issue of blood, wasn't there? And never ceased to be bleeding and she wasted all her livelihood on trying to be healed and delivered of this. And then she just touched the Lord, didn't she? There was just a touch. And it was all done and dusted, wasn't it? That's all we need from the Lord, is just a touch. When the Lord touches someone, if he just touches, my wife had a tooth extracted the other day, and it was a a tooth that was deeply rooted and when she came home uh, the anaesthetic was wearing off and she started to get a lot of pain in her jaw so we knew it was time for the Lord to touch her, her jaw bone you know and um, so I laid hands on her and prayed and she was delivered it was, it was another touch from the Lord. The job was done. Hey? So, the cross, hey? The cross. 
that's our that's our answer that's our that's our all to know the Jesus that was crucified hey the scriptures say let's go to Timothy to know the Jesus that was crucified not this Jesus in a in a stable baby Jesus hey we'll go over to Timothy and we'll go to 1 Timothy hallelujah better make sure better make that 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 11 if we die with him we shall live with him if we endure we shall reign with him if we deny him he will deny us if we are faithless he remains faithful he cannot deny himself he cannot deny his word hey The way of the cross intrigued Paul the Apostle to the place where he lost interest in all things. Hey? And he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, Hebrew of Hebrews and circumcised on the eighth day, trained by Gamaliel. He, he had authority given to him to kill and he was a, a knowledgeable man but he said very clearly he cast it all aside anything anything that was gain to him he counted as loss so that he could know Christ the surest way to know Christ is to not insult him by even thinking that there is some other teaching or some historical fact or some um, conspiracy theory or there's some ancient um, rubble dug up somewhere in the world. We don't want to insult crimes. Paul cast it all aside. He put it all behind him. And he pressed on to the high call of God in Christ. He wanted that crown. There's only one crown. There's only one prize. There's no runner-up. The churches today, the way they teach and preach is as if there's a runner-up prize, you know. Half a crown or something. You know what? Or one without so many jewels. Now there's only one crown and that will be given to the one who endures temptation and is proven. Come on. We must endure if we're, if we're going to reign with him. We must uh, die with him if we're going to live with him. Yeah? That has to be. So Paul bestowed it all that he may lay hold of the Lord's way the Lord's walk the Lord's person and he he, he did do that he, he, he did accomplish that by the power of the Holy Ghost and the power that was working in him because he said hey it's no longer I that live but Christ is living now Christ is having his way in my life every day. There's no peace or rest till the Lord has his way. Yeah? So, whether it be laughter, fun times, or gain, fame, fortune, all these things have an end. And they all wear thin, don't they? sooner or later even fun now you know you get sick of having fun you get sick of laughing you get a sore jaw and then it just sort of fades 
and the, and the fame. Ask anyone that has fame. Fame makes a man feel much older. You ask anyone with fame or fortune, it they'll tell you it's not the end. They'll tell you it's not the beginning. And they'll tell you it's not the in-between. It's just something they have. They find that out. And there's those that, you know, as I said before, they like to party and gather together and do all kinds of things. But everything has an end. The, the, the thrill to the marijuana or the, or, or, or the drunkenness. The, you know, the, when the last bottle of champagne is popped and, you know, everyone's got the hangover. It's all over, isn't it? And everyone goes back to the water, H2O. Plain old water. And that is the type of people coming after they've lived a life of, of sin and, 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 and debauchery. And they lived a life of, of um, the flesh, pleasures of the flesh, sensuality. And they come to their senses by the grace of God. And they start to follow Jesus. You know, it's like the man who's finished with, I've, I've drank enough alcohol, I've smoked enough dope, I, I just want to sit down somewhere quietly. My head is thumping. Just get me some soda water or water or in ice, ice in it. And, and that's like that the sinner coming back to the water of life. And Jesus gives us that water a once and for all where you will never thirst again. And the bread where you will never hunger again. Hey? Paul knew this of Christ. Paul said, look, I don't want to know about it, you know. I don't want to know about it. I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and him. He wasn't going to settle for anything else except Christ crucified. As disciples of Jesus, I preach Christ and him crucified. That's everything. That's Jesus the Christ ministry. Christ and him crucified tells you something. It equals discipline. People don't want discipline. People don't want discipline. Jesus never said, I'm going to follow you. He said, follow me. He said, you come to me. You knock at the door. You see, there's that humbling, isn't it? Jesus never chased you after people. You come to me. Knock, and the door will open. He's just letting us know who's got the goods. Yeah? He's letting us know he's the one doing the teaching. He's the one in control. He's the one that we need. It, it, you know, it's enough to be as the teacher. But the student will never be greater than the teacher. So Paul the Apostle was a very simple man when he was converted on the Damascus Road. Powerfully. He was a very different man. And a very humble man. Simplicity 
started to flood his life. We know that because he said in, 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 in his writings that I fear least as the, as the serpent deceived Eve so he will come in after I leave. And the devil does use people to come into your mind or even just spirits and oppression from the exterior. Oppression. The devil comes to steal the seed that the preachers planted in the heart. The devil comes and questions everything. The devil is a liar. There's many people out there today who keep their Sabbath and think they keep the commands of God but live in known sin because they don't even know they can go free because they're not born again. They don't have the spirit of Christ. So when you have the spirit of Christ, it's the first thing you know. I can go free. Good news. Glad tidings, I don't have to live in sin. Jesus, one of the most simple scriptures of Jesus is he come to set the captive free. Yeah? So Paul the Apostle kept it very simple. Christ and him crucified. That's what he preached and that's what we preach. We preach that everything is in Christ all we ever need and long for is in that doctrine of Jesus it quenches the thirst and fills the hunger that's why Jesus said the Holy Ghost and the church say come and drink of the water of life freely and then those who come go and tell others to come and drink it too you won't be thirsty you won't be getting on the plonk you won't even be trying to find loopholes in the Holy Ghost system where you can say oh well it's all right to have a drink you know you're quenched Look, I was drunk eight days a week. Don't tell me about love and booze. Don't tell me I don't know about loving booze. You know? I used to hug my bottle. You know? <laughs> and the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad, so I had one more for dessert. And I used to stumble down the stairs in my cleanest dirty shirt to meet the dame. And the uh, city Sunday sidewalks were very lonely. Hey? But there's something in a Sunday that makes a man feel alone. But I don't feel alone anymore. When I was a soldier in the Australian Army amongst 600 soldiers, I felt lonely. I, I was so lonely I could have died. But I'm not lonely now and I don't have 600 mates flanking me. They weren't friends, they were mates. A lot of difference. A friend is someone who stands beside you, doesn't matter what's happening. Machine gun fire all around and you're standing there with him with no weapon. That's a friend. <laughs> Hello. Yeah? Jesus is the friend. He's always there. Hey? I've never had a friend like Jesus. I've never had a friend like Jesus. No, I never had a friend like him. He's faithful and true. 
And he's always there. Oh, I've never had a friend like him. No, I've never had a friend like Jesus. No, I never had a friend like him. Oh, Paul knew this. Paul knew. Look, I, I, I'm onto something here. <laughs> I'm on to the all time great. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I am with thee always, even to the end of the age. Let's give him some respect. Let's appreciate him and, and relish in him and, and exalt him. Let's exalt the Lord our God. Let's worship at his footstool. Eh? <laughs> I don't want to look. I don't want to know about it. Oh, look! This happened. This is happening here, and this is happening here. And did you know what this church is doing? And did you know what? That, you know how many go here? And you, did you know how much money they made last week? And did you know? Look! I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to hear no more. There's nothing here to keep you. So just keep walking out the door. You know what I mean? I don't want to know about it. Except Christ and Him crucified. There it is. That's the highest of highs. And if you hang around with people who aren't in that frame of mind, you're going to be on the lowest of lows. <laughs> I'm telling you. All these religious people around the place, you know, keeping the commandments, but living in sin. Keeping Sabbaths, living in sin. They don't even believe that Jesus can set them free. You just have to suck it up. You know, they, they, all they know about is tainted love. <laughs> they don't know the agape love. The world only knows tainted love. They don't know agape love, none of them. They don't even have the right to talk about love. Because they don't know God. God is love. Love ain't blind, it's on this end. Hello. You can say amen, oh my, oh why. I'm going to say hallelujah. <laughs> Laughter or the cross. Hey? Laughter or the cross. The world is out there wanting to be jolly, aren't they? No crucifixion. There's no resurrection. We don't put to death the flesh by walking in the spirit. We're not going to rise, are we? We're not going to rise like the eagle. We're just going to be digging around in the chunk pen with the rest of the religious chunks. And that's pretty crook, isn't it? Hey? Scratching around in a fowl house is foul as not mounting up with wings like eagles through discipline Paul's talking about discipline Christ and him crucified equals discipline Jesus had disciples we are disciples the word comes from the word discipline that's what if you want to use that word Christianity, it's not in the Bible, but I think the word Christian is mentioned once, and that was by mistake, I don't know. But <laughs> if you if you want to use that word Christianity, that's what it's all about. It's another word for discipline. People don't want that. So they they look for a alternative which is a look alike. A, a Jesus that 
doesn't expect you to give up your life. A Jesus that doesn't expect you to crucify the flesh and its uh, passions. A Jesus that doesn't expect you to love him more than your mother and sister, brother, family and relatives. Self, sin, professions and possessions. That's the Jesus in these one world churches. Ecumenical churches. So, when we get out of the nitty gritty, Paul the Apostle nailed it with Christ and him crucified. Not fanciful, flowery speeches of trained orators who've been trained by men how to speak. No. Just hand yourself over to Christ and let's see what he can say through you. <laughs> Because that's all that's happening here today. Hey? I've made myself available. Therefore I'm able, capable and apt to bring forth a message that shatters satanic shackles. Hey? Bust the beams of Beelzebub. Cracks the chains of the devil. Setting captives free. Healing, broken hearts, hey? Setting at liberty those who are under the oppressing hand of darkness. Glory, hallelujah, hey? Oh, whew, Jesus. But yet, there's cultures out there and different people say, oh, we just laugh it off, you know? <laughs> we just laugh it off. Yeah, it's... It, Maybe, but it's still there tomorrow. You're going to laugh it off again. But it's still there. Never, they've never dealt with it. They've never put the axe to the root because they don't even know there's an axe that can uh, sever the root of their serious and, and uh, lifelong plaguing problem of sin. You know, or it might be those who, you know, oh, we, we just laugh it off or ha, 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 it's all gone now. Let's have a party. Hey, now we're having a party. They'll be singing, dancing and swinging now. Come on over tonight. Might be that Aussie spirit or the spirit of the horse, you know. Spirit of the horns. Or the spirit of my ancestor. That's what will bring me through. The spirit of, of my dad. I've still got his slouch hat with the feather in it. And that'll bring me through. Hey. The spirit of my great, 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 great ancestors. They were pirates. They were... That'll bring me through, you know. No, it won't. Damned to the fires of hell. Right? And we're moving into the sandy season now, at this time of the year, where they're going to be doing all the celebrations of seasonal celebrations and breaking the word of God again. Denying the Lord. Denying the power. They all have an appearance of godliness but deny the power thereof. The power of godliness. Holy Ghost leading and moving in your life. But they have an appearance of godliness. They have the building with the cross on them. They have the gowns. And they have all the rituals. Doing that cherry lafrong with the incense, you know. <laughs> Practicing their sling throwing. We don't have to have, like King David, a sling. You know, the Roman Catholic priests have the incense. We don't have to have a sling with a stone in it. Because Jesus already sorted it. 
and the tray, didn't he? he uh, Don't take your stones to town, son. Leave your stones at home, Bill. Don't take your stones to town. He's already dealt with it. <laughs> and I'm bogged down with sevens and Saturdays and hi hi at Saturday. We're not bogged down with any of that, eh? Because we have that great liberty in Christ because we do what he says up to the light we have. Christ crucified. I, look, I don't want to know about it. Did you know it's Christmas? Did you know that uh, 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 many hindrances coming to speak at the uh, Rich Out For Your Money uh, auditorium? I mean, Rich Out For Christ. Or rich... And Joyce Meyer and the Myra Clay ministers will be joining them, teaching you how to stay in the bondage of sin forever. Because they'll be selling also... On the table, there'll be books of C.H. Spurgeon who believed and taught one same, always same. Absolute predestination, salvation by election. But he was a great orator. Oh, wonderful in speech. Hang on a minute. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with the excellence of speech or the wisdom of men. Can someone say amen? And they did stand in the snow outside C.H. Spurgeon's church, standing in two-foot snow just to hear him speak. And C.H. Spurgeon had many a picture and portrait taken of him standing in front of his library that was uh, uh, bigger than a bull rhino. You know, it... His library was so voluminous, you couldn't even see the wall. He had that many books. And I've often wondered why a man of God would have so many books, especially when Paul the Apostle said, I just want to know Christ and him crucified. But it does make a good look, doesn't it? It's a good showing in the flesh when you see a minister, you know, nicely presented. In like in, in an Italian suit arrangement and sort of just leaning back on his library wall and the books are just so many you can't count them. It's a nice look in the flesh. But certainly a dead giveaway. When we know that all we have is imputed and given and nothing is of our own. To know Christ and him crucified. And many don't want to know Christ and him crucified. So they take the alternative route, don't they? Which is uh, accumulating tainted knowledge and wisdom of religion. All sorts of things are connected and and. Uh, stitched on the end and cut off in order to uh, impress people and delude people, deceive people. They're deceived and deceiving and being deceived. But Christ crucified cuts to the chase as Peter and John were spoken of, uneducated and untrained. Hang on, they must have been with Jesus. <laughs> hey? Bringing to naught all the great and fanciful teachings of all the orators, keeping commandments and keeping Sabbaths and wearing certain clothes, attending church assemblies on certain days. It's no better than days, weeks and months, isn't it? 
abusing the Saviour's system and curriculum, defaming the word of God and God, Christ. Galatians 4, 8 to 10, keeping of months and seasons and days when there's no such thing in Christ because now is the time of salvation and we're in him. It doesn't matter if it's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It has to be every day. Well, not at all. All to Jesus I surrender. Can you say amen? amen. Laughter or the cries or that Aussie spirit or the spirit of the horse, the spirit of the cane toad or, you know, all these things. No, I just... I, Look, I'm determined to know nothing. My, I'm determined to know Christ, him alone, and him crucified, that I may be one with him as he is with Father, that I may look, walk in the light as he is in the light, that I may have something to offer the brethren, that I may have something to offer the broken, that can't be purchased, purchased in the local shopping centre. Yeah? Still in the flesh. And missing the mark all the time. Doing all except all. Because man's all is to fear God, revere him, respect him. Relish in him, worship him, and do what he says. And Jesus is our peace. Not a day, not a Sabbath day. That's religion. Doesn't make any difference. If you want to keep the Sabbath, you're convicted to keep the Sabbath, you keep the Sabbath. Don't expect anyone else to. You don't want to eat shellfish? Don't eat shellfish. Don't expect everyone else to. What you, it, the scriptures say very clearly, let's read it in Colossians. Let's see what the Lord says, the crucified Christ. Let's see what he says. And if you hearken to the words of the crucified Christ, you'll be crucified too. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 14, having wiped out the handwritings of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, nailed it to the cross, disarmed principalities and powers of darkness, made a public spectacle of them, triumphed over them. Therefore let no one judge you in food, drink, or regarding a festival, new moon, or Sabbaths, plural, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance is of Christ. You with me? Let no one defraud you of your reward, taking delight in false humility, worshipping angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind. Doesn't matter what, look, people want to eat that, you let them eat it. I'm not convicted. I have no conviction of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing wrong with eating prawns. You, you don't want to eat shellfish? Don't eat it. You missed the blessing, man. You want to drink booze? You drink it. You suffer the consequences. You suffer the headache later or whatever. Hey? Alcohol changes the pattern of the mind. Spirits of lust hang around alcohol. It brings on lust. 
opens the door to spirits of lust. So it's up to you. Sabbath, that's all shadows. They were a shadow. Sabbaths were shadows. The Old Testament is the shadow. Who's greater, the person or the shadow? What can the shadow do for you? We're in him, the person, the substance, Christ. He's dealt with it all. He sorted the whole thing. Paul knew what he was talking about. I've got to know Christ. I've got to know his way. I've got to know his word. I've got to know his walk. I've got to know his person. Can someone say amen? Okay. Right? That was Paul's goal. Paul's goal was not building a building. Paul's vision and goal was not material. Paul's vision and goal was not monetary. Paul's vision and goal was Christ. Him. No minister in the New Testament had a material vision of anything. It's all in the Old Testament, the shadow. We're in Christ now. He's blown out the borders, man. He just blew the walls down. <laughs> He's busted the whole thing wide open. We're not writing visions on the wall. Oh, and those who don't have a vision uh, will be, you know, destroyed. Of course, my vision is Christ. I won't be destroyed. All I see is Jesus standing at Father's right hand. He's standing up. He's ready to help me. He's ready to protect me, provide for me, and empower me. Yeah? Laughter. Hey? You gonna laugh at all? The sure answer is 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 the cross. The sure answer is the disciplining hand of Christ to deal with all issues in life. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the ache, I don't care what the pain, I don't care what the loss. Most people live their life in memories. Memories. Pass between the pages of my life. That's where they live. Now, today, they're living in memories. They spend millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars on pictures and photo albums. They're living back there. I'd rather live in the now. I get me money's worth, hallelujah. I'm squeezing all I can. I've done that, been there, done that. I've got more than T-shirts to prove it. I've got scars and bruises. They're living in the, in the memory. The first thing that comes out of the bushfire destructions is, I, I, I'm not worried about anything else, but the photo albums are gone. The family photo albums are all destroyed. What will I do? I can't replace them. I'll tell you what to do. Go to Jesus. Go to Christ and him crucified. He'll just soak that up like a sponge. Water on a table. It's all memories, isn't it? I remember. I remember when. I remember when I was young. The world had just begun and I was happy. I used to wonder about the earth, the trees, and how they grew so plenty. Sometimes I think about it. It happens every day. I'm sure that the bad times weren't so bad anyway. Well, I remember when I was young. I remember when I was young. I surely do. They're all remembering, oh, then, and that goes back. That's where the devil wants to take you. He takes you back. Jesus takes you forward. He, he can paralyze you if he can take you back. Get your, your head space and thinking. That's the battlefield of the mind. He gets you thinking on the past and, and, and what happened back there. Memories. Oh, I lost this person, I lost that person, and this happened back then. Forget it. Forget it. 
The main thing is you don't lose your soul. The main, main thing is you don't lose sight of Jesus. You don't drift too far from the shore. Paul was always saying the main thing is Christ. Peter was saying, he said the same. Christ and him crucified. So, Jesus is not physically amongst us. So what can we put down to Christ and him crucified? The word, the doctrine of Christ. When you apply it, it look, Christ will manifest and your flesh will be cru crucified. You don't have to worry about trying to conjure up some Roman Catholic stigmata, torturing yourself and sticking things in your neck or whatever they do. False humiliation, fasting till you can't walk or something. Hey? Bring the burgers on in the name of Jesus, please. <laughs> Hey? It'll be Christ crucified when you start to obey the word automatically. And then we'll sing. Do you really want that? Oh, I want the power of God in my life. Oh, yeah, no, you, you're just full of pride and arrogance and you just want to run around the place blabbing everyone, telling everyone how much you know and, and you're going to do miracles, everyone's going to look at you. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. <laughs> you'll never know the power of God, man. And you'll never have that simple, profound wisdom and knowledge and revelation and inspiration of God until it's Christ in him crucified. You can't get it out of Bible college. You can't get it out of um, uh, uh, history. You can't get it out of... Uh, uh, um, Conspiracy theories, you can't get it off the TV, you can't get it uh, in a, anywhere. Except you say, yeah, Christ and him crucified. That's where you're going to get it from. <laughs> in other words, you say yes to Jesus every time. You say, oh, that's too painful, man. The offer's too good. Well, that's how much you want it. If you if you really really want to get into the heavenly, Christ and Him crucified. If you really want to get into the zenith, Christ and Him crucified. Obedience, faith, obedience to Christ, and you'll be there, and you'll have it to the perfect degree that He has and portion He has allotted to you. You won't be saying, "Oh, increase our faith, the disciples." In, God doesn't increase faith, I can tell you now. Because Jesus said, no, you just use what you got, man. He said, yeah, faith of a mustard seed, you could move the mountain. It's got nothing to do with quantity. It's about application. It's about applying what you have and then you'll see what he's given you. Hey? We only ever get an increase of the knowledge of what God has given us. Not an increase of our faith. God is not one that makes mistakes. He has given everyone a measure. He has already done that before you were born. Are we going to tap into that? We can tap into that. And he's given every single individual more than they need. No one on the planet can say, oh, well, I just don't have faith to believe. I just can't be saved because I just don't believe. No, you're mocking God again. God has desired that all repent. So in order to repent, you're going to have to have some sort of faith, don't you? He doesn't want to lose one. He desires that all repent. 
So when the word of God is preached, faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Opportunity comes for everyone. And then if that person receives, their measure of faith will be there for them to tap into to do all they need for Christ, in Christ, through Christ. Amen? Amen. No excuses. The gospel will be preached to all creatures, even the ants and the fleas will hear it. There'll be no excuse. Oh, I never heard. You know, what? You never heard? No. Well, that bloke on the street gave you that brochure that time. You read half it and threw it in the bin in a, in a, in a tantrum. Because it convicted you of the sin you were in. What do you mean? Never heard it. You rejected it. I never heard it. That bloke gave you that brochure that day and you just threw it on the ground when you walked around the corner. That seed ended up on the wayside. What do you mean you never heard it? You had the opportunity. I never heard it. Yes, you did. You received it. You're jumping up and down and saying hallelujah and everything. And then the cares of the world came in and you thought, oh, no, it's not worth it. And you tell them. Hello? Christ and him crucified. Discipline. The flesh doesn't want discipline. The devil knows that human beings love to pamper the flesh. Easy way. The whole of this life is all about doing it easy. And in the process, most if not all do it hard. The whole of the world, I don't care whether you want to be a musician, whether you want to be a famous, whether you want to be... Uh, at the end, it's all about having an easy, luxury, easy-peasy life. The television, it does not promote anything else. It says an easy-peasy life. Oh, look at the softer chair, bigger chair, bigger television, bigger screen. Oh, softer car. This car has airbags underneath the wheels, you know. And when you go along, you press it and you go rise above the ground about two inches. And it's so soft inside. And then you press another button and burgers come out of the dash. Already got cholesterol problems and had three heart attacks. Hey? And when you press another button, there's a thing of hot butter that pours all over your chips. And then the button next to it, if you press that as you're driving along in your car, all the herbs and spices sprinkle onto it. And then the final button, you press it, and a little arm comes out and picks up the chips and that and puts it in your mouth as you're driving. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Oh, look, I think the point has been made here today. Eh? Laughter or the cross. We all want the easy way to heaven, don't we? There's no easy way to heaven. There's no silver bullet. There is no... Uh, you know... One trick pony thing. <laughs> it's not. We, we have to walk the wall daily. It has to be the old rugged cross. Christ and him crucified. Otherwise we're just not going to get the point. The Roman Catholics missed the main point. That there's one mediator between father and man. Jesus. No one else. No priest, no nun, not Mother Tesleza or Mother Teresa. You're not talking to the dead, you're talking to demons. You're talking to familiar spirits. 
You're mocking God. You're operating outside the established canon. Stay within the boundaries of the doctrine of Jesus and you will enter in to that foretaste divine, foretaste of heaven, just that taste. Hey? Oh, what fellowship. Oh, what joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what blessedness. Hey? Oh, what peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, I'm leaning. Yes, I'm leaning. Safe and secure. From all along, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what fellowship, what joy divine. Not joy that you get from booze or drugs. Hey? Joy divine. Joy unspeakable. Can't talk about it, can't explain it. It's another realm, it's another sphere. In me you will have peace. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Those whose minds are stayed and staked and set upon the Lord, he will keep in peace perfect peace because they have made God happy because God sees that they trust in him. Messiah 26.3 paraphrased of course by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah? Perfect peace. Perfect is a word that no one wants to talk about today. There's no such thing. You can't be perfect. There's no perfect peace. God's not perfect. He can't even do his job properly. Everyone's starving. There's war, hatred and violence. Where's this Jesus of yours? It's all a myth and rubbish. Forget about it. Let's go down the pub. Hey? Man likes to do it his way. Paul the Apostle did and he ended up in misery. He just ended up a killer. There's a killer on the road. <laughs> he was on the Damascus road and Christ struck him down. He turned him around. And now we're reading of the profound writings of Paul who said, Christ and him crucified. That's where it is. That's where it is. It's not in the accolades. It's not in the achievements. It's not in the uh, sunshine. It's not in the boogie. It's not in anything except Christ and him crucified. That's where everything is. That's where you find you, your calling, you find your lot, your niche, you find everything in Christ and Him crucified. In submitting and subjecting yourself to the living Word of God. When Jesus says jump, we don't ask why, we ask how high. Yeah? Laughter or the cross. I mean, laughter does sound better, doesn't it? For the now. Ha, 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 he, 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 ho, ho, ho. That's wide road. Narrow road is narrow. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Difficult is the going thereby and few find it. Yeah? Jesus 
Jesus always wants us to find it. He wants us to find the treasure he has there for us. That's why he said, pick up your cross and follow me. That's when you'll find it. Real treasure. If he can't trust us with the inferior riches, how can he trust us with the real riches? Revelation, knowledge of God. He can't trust us to be good stewards and servants of, of a few dollars. How can he trust us with true riches of revelation, knowledge of God, the mysteries of God? He wants us to find that treasure he has there for us. He wants the word to dwell in us richly. Because at the end of the day, Jesus never left nothing. The disciples left nothing. Not one disciple left anything material. Not one disciple left any money for anyone. Not Jesus, none of his disciples, not one left a material legacy or a financial monetary legacy for anyone. Any man of God dies with money in the bank. I don't believe he was a man of God. I don't believe he was a good faithful steward of the mysteries of God. So call men of God. The man of God dies with no money in the bank. They say that man used every cent he had and every bit of resource, everything he had, and he distributed and got rid of it. He lived day to day in the name of Jesus, trusting in the Lord. By faith in the Son of God, knowing that the Lord will come through, knowing that the Lord called him to the work and he'll call and meet the call. Let it be known, Paul the Apostle said, that we are servants and stewards of the mysteries of God. He didn't say we were businessmen. He didn't say we were great money makers. We were entrepreneurs. He didn't say that. He said we are servants and stewards of the mystery, the spiritual goods and riches of God. The greatest riches there is. The only soul-saving, power-packed, delivering riches and treasure there is on the earth, in the universe, the living word of God. All the rest is inferior. Can someone say amen? Thank you, Jesus. Everybody said...